What's up guys, Eric from Varus Engineering and we have Ryan Turk's Formula Supra. Here for some aero analysis and improvements on his setup. So basically what we're doing right now is we're scanning the entire vehicle. So we're gonna scan the entire external of the vehicle, the bottom, which is basically flat bottom. Ryan's done a really nice job building this car overall. It's one of the nicest cars I've honestly seen in person. We're actually scanning the underhood right now. We're gonna do a dummy engine block. We're gonna get some through ducts for the radiator. We're gonna actually model as if the coolers are there, which they are in real life. We're going to model the hood louver, and then basically the lack of a fender liner. Through ducts, these vents are actually functional. We're modeling all of that to try and get it as accurate as possible so that when we run our analysis it's going to be applicable to what they see in real life now ryan's given us some feedback on what the car has seen on track and we're basically going to try to replicate that show him the data ask if it correlates to how he feels it behaves on track and then we're going to start developing from there ultimately every driver likes a different aero balance we want to make ryan happy with the aero balance that we come up with on the car the first step of that is getting the model as accurate as possible into cad and then into cfd What's going on guys? Just got out here to Veris Engineering, which is in Indianapolis, Indiana. It's also the same weekend as a PRI show. It's nice to pair that up with coming to check out the Formula Supra. Eric here at Veris Engineering already got the thing 3D scanned. So we're kind of coming in to go over the game plan for the car, what his plans are for the aero package, check out the 3D scan, check out the shop, do a tour, and just see what they got going on. So let's check it out. Scan data is not usable data. It helps us create services, use it as a reference. The problem is you can't run CFD or actually design parts directly off of scan data. While we section it, it's an infinitely thin surface, which is not very beneficial for like running CFD. So that's what I mean by we have to solidify the scan data. So we have the Super CFD model here, and then if we actually section this, you'll notice that it's actually solid. And then obviously we have to get all the suspension and small pieces that we want to capture as far as airflow and what we're going to analyze. So we obviously have some of the engine bay. So we have a rough engine block and some area around it. But like some of it is like a little bit of guessing to try and get it as accurate as possible. We obviously have the cores model, but we basically are going to do the same thing with your car. Because your car is so different, we literally had to scan all your whole car. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which is a little bit different than what we did for Jackie's car, which we just kind of scanned the parts that were different. And then we transposed it onto our CFD model. Yours is going to basically be ground up. Everything. Yep. All over again. All over again. <laughs> How many hours do you have in the 3D scanning? So generally speaking, this takes me between four and eight hours. Okay. I would say yours was probably in the middle six-ish. Overall, it went together pretty well. And I didn't have to do much of the underbody. It's flat. So I just grabbed that plane that's basically going to be flat and we're just going to and flatten that. And I just ride all the way over. I gathered all the data for like your diffuser. And for those people that are wondering why we only have half of it scanned, we basically grab enough data so that we can find a center line and then we mirror it. Your car is even easier in that respect that it doesn't have a transmission tunnel or an exhaust. Most because of the, of the flat floor. Yeah. yeah. So like our super CFD model, it's not mirrored. It's different. Cool. So to convert the file and actually get something usable for CFD, quite a few weeks yep. worth of work. We've actually never completed it. We have tried it at one point and I think we spent two weeks and we got about this far. So that was about 80 hours worth of work. Obviously there is software and there is some skill there. So the guy, he quoted us what, two and a half, three weeks? Once that shows up, the solid of the car, it's still a lot of work because nothing that you would expect to be flat or cylindrical actually is. None of that engine bay details there and so any like through ducts have to be modeled. There's a lot of cleanup that still needs to happen on top of that. With your car we actually did scan your engine bay Ooh, and we're going to do, that. you can actually read AEM 
That's cool. So the scans are fairly accurate, but we're gonna try and do a pretty decent job of analyzing this. Something kind of neat here that I actually scanned the bottom side of the hood and then I aligned it. We might make a recommendation that, hey, we should probably block this block off. Something off. There Damn. might be some things that we're gonna recommend that are pretty low hanging fruit that's right. gonna be beneficial. That's the stuff we need. We'll finally have a quantifiable situation going on here. We'll actually know what's working, what's not working and how we can improve it with the budget I have. So these are our cheap printers. This is more like basic prototyping Very stuff. Very early prototyping. Yeah. So we'll throw it on the car. That print is probably five dollars, eight dollars okay. in material. If we did it on that, it would be thirty. On $40. one of these ones. Yeah. Okay. Um, because the material is so much more expensive, it also prints a lot faster. Maybe three hours on that print. Yeah. If we did it on that, it would probably be like eighteen. The carbon nylon printers do a really nice job as far as strength, look. These are some of the products. And this is straight off of here. Yeah. That's if I didn't really tell clean you looking. That it's printed, you would almost be like, oh, that's an injection molded part. So those are actually steering rack limiters for the yep. Supra. Exhaust cutout covers. Yep. That's basically what kind of brought out us purchasing these. But then we found some other good uses for them. Splitter end plates, brake ducts, stuff like that. Suite two is where our development vehicles stay. Where the cars get upfit, scanned, torn apart, put back together, et cetera, yep. et cetera, over here. So we could talk about your car specifically. As far as what we're planning on attempting to do, we did scan this, that we're gonna do that as a through duct and see how that does with the whole okay. fender. The oil cooler, I did scan that and I got the outlet. And like I said, we scanned the entire engine bay as much as I could to kind of simulate this. And then obviously- To see where, to, would, yeah. Yeah, where we're kind of hurting ourselves. What we really wanted to do was obviously control the air coming through the radiator, you know, to exit it. It's kind of obviously a very abrupt climb. Are you having Does any- stay cool? Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, we could take the fans off the car. No issues. I don't know, this thing gets hot real quick in a pit. And then I don't know if like closing this in further would help at all. Or... So we're gonna analyze that. Okay. Yeah, me and Matt were discussing. We're like, this is all awesome. And then I was like, what the heck is this about? For all we know, it just builds up with a high pressure pocket. Right, and just holds and then it, it there. Just like a truck bed with a tailgate up. It's actually more efficient that way than the oh, tailgate really? down. Yeah, with the tailgate up, it swirls a bunch of, has eddies in there. And basically the airflow actually stays attached really? to the other airflow better. Interesting. This was one of our questions. So obviously we left this off. We kind of wanted your opinion on what the heck to do or what you want to do. What do you think the best case scenario is and then um, take it from there? So obviously you're not gonna get a new trunk. So we're gonna have to cover these holes. Basically doing what they already had done where it's contoured. And yep. then it would basically sandwich this whole thing. And then when you do pull it off, the whole carbon trunk doesn't move. We did scan this. Uh, I think our initial goal is to probably reuse these so that we don't have to do it. Yep. And then just make the rest of the parts with another wing okay. a little bit nicer. Uh, Bottom side. I don't like, the way it was constructed still left a lot to be desired in many ways. Even a mounting point and situation, like it, it felt like it was always gonna be too high off the ground. One of the things that we're gonna try with your car is like a new inexpensive carbon splitter. And I think this is the perfect candidate to do it. Basically, it's gonna be like a combination of like 3D printed molds, bonded in diffuser tunnels. The blade will be flat otherwise. Like say Jackie Ding splitter. Yeah. One of the hardest parts or the biggest costs are the mold because it's actually all single piece. Um, oh, really? Yeah. So that's like a $10,000 mold. That's super intensive, mold. yeah. Because yeah. you're basically putting a big ass piece of foam and then routing it out. I did that with the stout, so I understand the, just the foam in general costs yes. a lot of freaking money. Yep. <laughs> Let alone the router and everything else. Yeah, programming. <laughs> yes. And then somebody actually laying a mold yeah. to that plug and all that stuff. Um, so basically, we're gonna try and surpass that all together. We're gonna 3D print the plug. He's gonna lay carbon mold and then pull the carbon diffuser panels off of the carbon mold and then bond it all in. Cool. Together. The other things that we can show you is basically the shop. So we have yeah. two five axis CNC models. I, I love watching freaking machines do their thing, dude. <laughs> a bit going on. We have two lasers. We have a CO2 laser that does powder coated parts. So those are our UCW mounts. They're getting laser engraved with our logo. We'll take a little bit of alcohol to them and then that kind of cleans them up. We have a fiber laser, which does all of our anodized parts. So we do some caps, uh, AOS, pedal spacers, cam covers, jack pucks that we put on your car. Yep. Nothing too crazy here, bar stock. Over here, we obviously have the CNC mills. Two DMGs now. I started with the UMC 750. It was a piece of crap. It did not work out well for us. Wow. But we also get after it. But the DMGs, like, they just mow through materials. 
So we're doing tensioners for a company, something for an LS, but it's basically a little bit stronger than the factory part. Okay. He came to me with like a rough idea. I basically redesigned it so it was a little bit easier to make and looked cool. Starts out as that, ends up as this. Yeah. This one is a little bit larger and it does AC, so A instead of B. So um, that one goes this way? Yep. Head does X, Y, Z, table does A and C. And that, that's making these right now? That's making these. Cool. So these are single lot parts. So it starts out as that, it'll tab off, sand it, send it to powder. Cool. Go. These are for the Supra. These are the bottom strengthening plates on the trunk. I love how contoured they are when you look at it that exactly way. It looks really for, cool. So we actually scan that, all that stuff, and then we design to the OEM curvatures yeah. so that everything's sandwiched perfect. And perfect. Yeah. We have a router down in 10, so that cuts all of okay. our poly weave. What's the finishing process on that? It's just do a little sanding on it? Yeah, so we basically are going to take it over to that sanding wheel, and we'll basically take off all these yeah, things. Yeah, okay. Yep. Just make it look a little bit nicer. Sweet, dude. This is such a cool operation. Making a lot of cool stuff. Try to. Super's back in town in the shop. We got on stand, just doing a reprep on it and addressing the alternator issue that we had with the belt coming off. So I shipped those parts out to Dominic for him to address and figure out a better system for that. And also I just got hit up by Mobile One to do this ice race event on Aspen, Colorado in the next few weeks. So stoked to do that. So that's gonna be something brand new for this car to do. And we're reprepping and getting ready for that. Zach's also coming out. So we'll have another vlog out from that event, which should be sick. So like, subscribe. See you guys in the next one.